All right, guys, we're going to try a picture on this. Let's get everybody one, please. All right, guys, pictures up. Pictures up. Pictures up. Let's roll sound. Rolling. Rolling. Sound speeds. Camera speeds. Two. Awesome. Take two. Mark. Set. And action. Get her! So the current of the month for July 2023 is none other than Trakoki University of Beauty Culture. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, this is crazy. Now I know you guys might be thinking, how can a whole university be a current? Easy. In the University of Trakokia, uh beauty culture did something very, very terrible. They allowed a young lady who was a student at their school to be spelled because she spoke up about a Juneteenth celebration that was planned. And she spoke up about this Juneteenth celebration uh, somebody there didn't like it and we're going to let her get into this and tell you a little more about this herself so today I got kicked out of school because the director at my school didn't like the feedback that I had for her about something that she said in class so I go to school right now for aesthetics um, I was practicing to be um, an esthetician. Mm -hmm. Now, at my school on Monday and Wednesdays, we have this thing called morning meetings where we basically like, you know, just talk about what's going to happen for the day, okay. the next few days, and we celebrate people that's like graduating and all of that type of stuff. Okay. Now, the director at my school had an announcement for us, and she said that Monday we will be celebrating Juneteenth, but okay. instead of celebrating it, for what it's for, we're gonna celebrate it um, as a diverse day, make it a diverse holiday. Now, that's where it messed up with me. She actually said, instead of us celebrating what it's for, we're gonna celebrate it as a diverse holiday. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Are you serious? <laughs> Sounds unbelievable, right? Wait, it gets better. And I wish she would have gave the name of this director. That's why I just gave it to the whole university. Because I felt like they should have stuck behind their student. I'm going to let her get finished telling her story of what happened to her. And I immediately got turned off by that because... I bet you did, sister. It's Juneteenth, right? Exactly. So after the morning meeting was over, I went up to the director and I asked to speak to her in private. In private. We went to her office and I basically explained to her, I'm like, yeah. Now, this is very essential to what's happening because she's going to have a conversation with this director person that she did not name. She's going to have the conversation with this director person private, right? Have a conversation with the director in private. Keep that in mind. That's very essential to the story. Yeah. Um, the way you worded it at the morning meeting today, it's, I didn't like how you said it because Juneteenth isn't a diverse holiday. It's, you know, it's not a diverse holiday. It's not where we celebrate diversity. We celebrate African-American independence. And she was basically telling me like, yeah, you need to mind your business because you don't know what I have planned for Monday. We're a diverse school. Therefore, we're going to celebrate this holiday as a diverse day. I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. And I was immediately turned off because. Exactly. That, like, it's, that's not what Juneteenth is about. Exactly. Right? So after that, I went back into the classroom. Now. She deemed her to be a problem after she came to her. This director deemed this young lady to be a problem after she came to her and explained to her her point of view on Juneteenth and what it was about. They were not. They were not. 
make St. Patrick's Day a diversity day. Have I mentioned that I want to be gold? St. Patrick's Day have to do with Ireland and the Irish. I want me gold! I want me gold! I want me gold! Cinco de Mayo is not a diversity day. Cinco de Mayo has to do with the liberation and stuff that happened in Mexico. Juneteenth is about black people. I want to do something. People um, don't seem to understand what is Juneteenth about. Let's look at this. Let me make my man smaller so we can fit this in here. This is this is a serious thing we need to talk about. The historical legacy of Juneteenth, right? On Freedom's Eve. Now, Freedom's Eve, for what you all don't might might don't know, is was um, January the first, eighteen sixty three. This was the first watch night on uh, December the thirty first. 1862 that evening as it was getting ready to turn it to the new years a resolution was passed that the enslaved or that our captive ancestors rather would be emancipated would be set free that's when it, the emancipation proclamation would take place now our ancestors started the watch night. The watch night that everybody do now where they count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and they sit there like, Happy New Year and be all happy. They didn't always do that. That tradition, uh, is uh, many traditions, came out of us. We sat there. Our ancestors sat there anticipating the very moment that slavery was going to end. That's why I became watch night. So we sat there, we gathered around, we waited, and then it was happy new year, but it was happy freedom. Because we was free. Everybody didn't get to enjoy that freedom of our people. Many of our people were sent to Texas where people were still down there fighting against the Union. And these enslavers, in order to save their interest, sent their, their captive blacks down to Texas. Now I'm going to read this so y'all can get this and see exactly what's going on here. It says on Freedom Eve, or on the eve of January the 1st, 1863, the first watch night service took place. The first one. We created that because of our freedom. Now it's been diversified as the lady was explaining to our student, that's been diversified. And now it's, uh, na, 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 and everybody say, Happy New Year's, and getting drunk. And, oh, we stayed up, and we wait till the ball drop, but we celebrated. They was not doing that. The first people to do that was us, and it had to do with our freedom, being emancipated from slavery. So it says, and it's from the Smithsonian, Museum, if you want to check it out, I will put the link in the description for those of y'all might want to read, make sure that it is saying what it's supposed to say. It says on Freedom's Eve, or on the eve of January 1st, 1863, the first watch night service took place on that night, enslaved and free. African Americans gathered in churches, as we do today, still do it, some of us. On that night, 
enslaved and free African Americans or enslaved uh, enslaved captives kidnapped Israelites gathered in churches and in private homes all across the country awaiting the news that the Emancipation Proclamation had taken effect. At the stroke of midnight, prayers were answered as all enslaved people in the Confederate States were declared legally free. Union soldiers, many of whom were black, marched on the plantations across the cities in the South reading small copies of the Emancipation Proclamation, spreading the news of freedom in Confederate states. Only through the 13th Amendment did emancipation end slavery throughout the United States. So this wasn't the one that ended slavery throughout the United States. That didn't happen to the 13th Amendment. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. This proclamation right here was just for the people that was in the Confederate, because remember, Lincoln said, all y'all that's fighting against the Union, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna free all, all your captives down there because they understood that that was the South's way of keeping their control and their sway and staying wealthy. So he said, we're gonna end that. We're gonna take that away from you guys. Look at what else it says. But not everyone in Confederate territory would immediately be free. Even though the Emancipation Proclamation was made effective in 1863. Listen to this. It was made into effect in 1863. It could not be implemented in places still under Confederate control. In other words, places that were still under Confederate control that the Union didn't bust up yet, they said, we don't care what Lincoln and those guys said in D.C. We not letting nobody go free. Even though the country itself said that the freedom was supposed to have happened. As a result, in the westernmost Confederate, in the westernmost Confederate state of Texas, enslaved people would not be free until much later. Freedom finally came on June nineteenth, eighteen sixty-five. That is two years and some months later. Again, two years. And some months later, when some 2,000 troops, so the troops had to come down there from the Union because they knew they got their um, captives down in Texas hiding them, trying to wait this out in hopes that the Confederate will win the South will rise again, the South will rise again. Paul and Crinoline's honey, the South shall rise again. No, Susanna, oh, don't you sit and spin. If we all turn out with a rebel shout, the South shall rise again. So that's what they was hoping, all right. So 2,000 Union troops arrived in Galveston Bay, Texas. The Army announced that the much more, so it was more than 250,000. Do you hear what I'm saying? It was over 250,000 captive blacks in a state were free by executive decree. This day became known as Juneteenth by the newly freed people in Texas. 
So this is what Juneteenth is about. It's not about diversity. The same way Cinco de Mayo is not about diversity. It's not about diversity. This is about people who were being held captive that found out that they've been lied to for two years and some change and now we're told that you're free. And they celebrated it. And this became such a big celebration that it became known as Juneteenth. That's what Juneteenth is about. It's about black people. It's about Israel. It's about redemption. It's about being set free. That's what this is about. So this sister was right to say, wait a minute, diversity, everybody, this don't have nothing to do with diversity and everybody. This is about black people. Now, if other people want to celebrate it. They have to celebrate it saying, we're happy that you blacks got freedom. Yes, let's celebrate it like that. Not say we're going to take this and make it into a diversity day where it's about everybody. Because you're just watering down the truth of what it's about. Now, this sister spoke up about this. That's why I want to get the clarity to what happened. This sister spoke up about this. To this director at Trakokia or Trakoki University. And now we're going to go back and see what transpired with this sister as she spoke up about this. And some of my classmates were like asking me, like, what did she say? Because we were all in agreement that that's not what Juneteenth, Juneteenth is about. Exactly. You know, we don't celebrate um, Cinco de Mayo as diversity. No, we don't. We don't celebrate Haitian Flag Day as diversity. We no, don't we celebrate don't. Indigenous People Day as diversity. No, we don't. You know? So... I felt like we don't celebrate St. Patrick Day as diversity. Something that it's not. Exactly. So while I was in the class, we were all talking about, you know, just basically what had happened at the morning meeting. The director storms in after me and she's like, yeah, um, you need to come here. And I just asked her, I said, you want me to go home, don't you? She was like, yeah, get your stuff and leave. You will be suspended. Wow. <laughs> And I'm like, suspended? suspended? Suspended for what? For what? And she's like, yeah, so now you need to leave my campus. Um, my before campus? I call police. Really? So after that, we got into an argument because I have to tell you, it, it, it was y'all even should have. It's not that deep. Like, why are you making it this whole thing? So we got into an argument in front of all of the students in my class. Like, she completely humiliated me, told everybody that she was suspending me and that I had to go home. Like, you're not supposed to, first of all, you're not supposed to tell my personal business to other students. That's number one. Second of all, you're mad because I had an opinion about what you had to say. I did the right thing and I pulled you to the side and told you, like, I don't. It wasn't even just an opinion, sis. It wasn't just an opinion. You was right. You were right. She was wrong. It wasn't even just an opinion. I understand how you trying to explain it to her to get her to understand, but she was wrong. And instead of the university, I, I'm going I'm to I'm let you go ahead. I think that's what we should be celebrating it as. So after that, after that whole argument, she's like, yeah, now you need to leave my building and instead of being suspended, you'll be expelled. I'm like, expelled for what? You would have thought she threatened this director's life. You would have thought she knocked this director upside her head or something to that degree. She is expelled now. And Trakoki University did nothing. They did nothing. Now she's expelled? For what? For telling you the truth? leave my building and instead of being suspended you'll be expelled i'm like expelled for what 
So we get into another argument as I'm leaving the door because I'm like, you're dead wrong. Exactly. Your feelings are hurt. You didn't like what I had to say. And now mm. you want to expel me Expelled. and still try to make me pay for a school that I didn't fully get to attend. And trying to make That's you not pay. Right. So as I'm leaving the building, mm. before I, I left, I wanted to like explain to my teacher, like, she's not going to be letting me back, you know, what had happened. I wanted to talk to my teacher, one of the cool teachers, right? So she's like trying to grab me by my book bag. She's pulling on me. Get out of my building. Get out of my building. And I'm like, just wait. Let me talk to my teacher because I want to talk to my teacher before I leave. Like, you you doing all of this for no reason. We get in front of um, the clients because at my school, we take clients. It's a, it's a beauty school, so we perform um, services on clients. She told the clients, yeah, I'm trying to remove this racist out of my building. She won't leave. She's a racist. I'm ra How is she a racist? See, clients always reverse stuff. They always this that's what the last month's client did. Try to reverse something. That Karen did something, lied about it. I brought it to his attention that he's a liar. And then he tried to reverse it and say, Yeah, I'm trying to do something. That's Karen's are famous for that. Right? And whoever this woman is, uh, eventually gonna find out her name is Miss Flo. Whoever Miss Flo is, she calls Trakoki university to become the current of the month because i can't find her so i can expose her and put her out there some put the whole university out there because they should have stood behind this sister who was right even after this sister brought this to the attention of the world they still stood their ground and did not budge racist because i said juneteenth is a diverse holiday it's not so now i'm the racist Right? It's situation. not a diverse holiday. It's not to do with diversity. I'm a racist Nothing. and she wants me to leave. After like a minute of me trying to find my professor, I could not find her. So you know what? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to leave. But as I'm walking back to the front, she's on the phone with the police. She told the police I tried to attack her and that I wouldn't leave the building. See? Classic Karenism. That's the classic thing to get on the phone. Oh, she's the black people. Oh, oh. He or she is one minute later trying to sound distressed so the police can come quicker. What? What? What in the world is this, boy? I ain't gonna lie. The classic Karenism. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> why why didn't you just tell us who this person was? I would have put her on blast so bad. But I guess the guy's got to go with the university. I really would have put her on blast. But let's keep it going. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's take this back. There's multiple people sitting in this lobby. Exactly. There was multiple people in my classroom. Yes. Not once did I try to attack you. There's cameras in this building, which show I did not try to attack you. I wasn't exactly. being violent or nothing like if that. If you would have, she, she would you would be in jail right, right now instead of on a phone talk. Attack her. All of this because she didn't like that. I didn't like that Juneteenth shouldn't be celebrated as a diverse holiday. So yeah, right now, um, I left. I'm gone. I just I left the review in the comments because I don't feel like that's right. Um, students of color, we can't express our feelings without um, directors at the school feeling like it's an attack on them or everything has to be an attack on everybody when it comes down to black people and African Americans in America. So yeah, that's just an update. Let's bring out Karen to the stage. Trachokia, University of Beauty Culture. You failed your student who stood up for what was right and you allowed a tyrant of a faculty member not only to lie on her and influence other students to stand against her, but you also allowed this faculty member out of her emotions to expel this young lady from school. And for that, and for that, you are the current 
of the month. Unanimously, you are the weakest link. Goodbye.